Our next speaker is uh, Nicola, who you probably know from the module system. Um, the one thing I definitely know about Nicola is if you, something annoys him strong enough, he'll do something like implement the module system. Um, uh, I have more notes. Uh, he works day-to-day uh, -day at Mozilla, recently working on a, a new project called Holy JIT, um, which is a just-in-time compiler for JavaScript written in Rust. Okay, thank you. So, uh, one thing I, I was looking for a logo for this present, uh, for a first like was this presentation, and uh, I was trying something with overlays. And I figured out that we already had overlays, we just need a bit of transparency to see them. <laughs> and Adding transparency in the logo, you can see that we already have overlays, and we also had a fixed point. <laughs> we had to the logo is had a way to fix to uh, fix the depth of the, of printing it. And if you recall some old T-shirts, it's not always easy to under understand fixed point, especially if you are a printer. <laughs> so the goal of this presentation is to make sure you understand overlays and make sure you understand them correctly. I gave to the needs. Uh, community a gift for Christmas. I give you overlays and almost a year after I came back to and went to, uh, to the web and looked for things where people used overlays and realized that, oh crap, people have used it, but <laughs> there are things that are in the documentation which might be not well explained and I hope this presentation will clarify that. So I will go and describe what they are, how they work, and what you can do with them. So Nixos is awesome. We have uh, the module system, which gives us the ability to be declarative. And this module system also uh, gives us the ability to uh, compose different modules from all over the place and make that into one set. Except that, OK, that's nice, but not everything is awesome. Sorry for the Lego movie. But Nix packages is like, you have these functions and they return something. It's not that much of declarative. And it's not it was not composable before overlays. And we, we will see how overlays make that composable. So before going into overlays, let's look at how we used to extend mix packages before that. Before that, we had these three functions. And these three functions were like, OK, there is package overrides that everybody, almost everybody, use in uh, config.nix. And it's nice. You can extend things. You can change the sources. OK, great. But you cannot share that easily because you have some custom stuff. And it's like there is this one file. And if you want to share that, you have to share a portion of it. And we're back to the problems that I had before making the NixOS modules, which were OK, how do we avoid getting into forums when we want to have a solution? And how can I just share a file and just pull that down? Then we have this other function, which I'm glad I removed it, which is override package. And if you don't know about it, don't go dig. <laughs> don't dig further. It's like awful, and it's no longer there. It's not, not even try to use it. It won't work. Then there is this other style, which is like, OK, I'm from an external file in another project, and I want to import Nix packages. And it sends these versions that I imported and adds these few packages inside it. That works well unless until the point where you want to add multiple. And then you realize, OK, then I want to import something else that needs packages, which already extends it. And it's becoming hell. So all of this, all of these methods are replaced by overlays, and the second one no longer exists. Great. Uh, soon, maybe I hope to break all of you if you are still using that. So composable, we, we can compose overlays in a way where we have the same syntax for all of them. We have a simple syntax which is made to copy and paste, and that's basically all. And then you can do all the things that you could do with uh, the overlays before, which is like you can add packages, you can replace some of them by tuning them, you can change the recipe, and you can remove some of them, which, for example, say, oh, it's leads equal null. <laughs> yep, uh, no more it's leads. 
which will break tons of stuff such as Emacs, I guess. And the way overlay works is that you have one directory or an option in NixOS or a single file which got added recently. And this one directory lets you add files at a coarse grain granularity. And you add files into this directory and this will be overlays which will be used one after the other and will be combined into Nix packages. So I will go through multiple examples. And after a while, I will ask you uh, to solve some of them. So I will go with the easy one. <laughs> so this is the simplest overlays that you can make. It takes two arguments. One is self, the other is super. And you give it an empty set, and you extend it next packages with nothing. Great. So overlays are not just some things that are made up. It's actually the internal of Nix packages. Nix packages is using the overlay system, except that it's doing a mess, which is currently elided in this slide. And it's using the overlay system to basically stage the different levels of Nix packages that we currently have. So this basically, uh, the things that I did was like, I was uh, trying to do the grafting work again. Yeah, if you recall the, the presentation from two years ago. And I realized that, huh, there is this function, override packages, which gives me tons of trouble. And I can replace it and just add overlays at the end. And that's basically all it is. Overlays are just adding something to the internal of Nix packages, and you get to extend all of Nix packages. And I can remove one of the side features that was there and was awful in terms of performances and hey, no longer here. <laughs> so no, we have overlays, yes. So a simple example that I found on the internet, uh, it's quite a full, uh, re it's resourceful, the internet. You find tons of things and sometimes are, you find good examples. And this one is just adding a command line to a command line argument to uh, Google Chrome, which is saying, hey, use this proxy to redirect all my network connections through this proxy, which is really nice, especially if you can set it on the command line and get all the nice feature and protections that you get with a proxy. <laughs> so, okay, that's a good way to get an overlay and you get to recompile Chrome once more. So, while we are discussing about recompilation, uh, some other people wanted to, uh, to get uh, to get Nix, but in a different directory. And basically, this is interesting if you are stuck in your home and you have no root access for adding the Nix directory at the top level. So this is a simplified example, but this has the same ideas, which is that you want to configure Nix to add its Nix or at a different directory. And that's an interesting one as well. So then you have other example where you just have ordinary packages as we do in Nix packages and that's just one of uh, the tools that we use uh, within Mozilla for discussing. So we saw this self and super and it's not clear when you see them. So self is basically uh, in Nix packages you have a fixed point. You have all these stages and you have a fixed point which basically takes the output and give it back at the input of all of them. And super is you have all these stages and it's the previous one. You take the next stage, it's the previous one, and so on. So that's how it that's basically all it is. But that doesn't tell you how to use them. Self is made to you uh, to basically find all the dependencies. So if you have a package and your package depends on said on uh, Bison on uh, Firefox, then you will use self. You will say uh, self.sed, self.bison, self.firefox. And that's all. If you want to use self for anything else, that's wrong. That's the only bullet point here. That's the bullet. <laughs> Super is basically all the rest. Is if you have functions called packages or library functions, or write text or run command, if you have functions, it comes from super. 
If you want to override the recipe, it comes from super. It comes from super for the following reason. Let's say I have said I want to override something in said, or, uh, and I want to, after overriding something in said, I want to define it as said. You get an infinite loop because you say, I want the recipe of the thing that I just defined. And that's why you have to look for recipes for making packages in the previous ones until you find one. And that's why also uh, overlays are ordered as opposed to NixOS modules. So, okay, we so self and super. No, I will ask you to raise your hand as soon as you find the issues in these examples. So if you find one issue, raise your hand that way. If you find two issues, raise your hand that way. And if you are watching this talk remotely, then you have the end key to see the answers. <laughs> OK, I see a few ends. So the first issue is like write text. Write text is basically, you, it's a function. It generates a derivation, but it's a function. As a function, it comes from super, not self. And the other one is a bit subtle to see. It's the fake closure. The fake closure is coming from above because of the right keyword. And it's not nice to make an overlay which is using the right keyword because if you are using the right keyword, basically that means that you're looping within your overlay and not from the self, uh, from the mix package's fix point, which means that an overlay which comes after has no opportunity to change that. So the fake closure loops inside instead of looping around. And if you want to give more opportunities to your users, you should use self instead of rake. So let's look at another. And this other one has one issue and it's something, raise your hand as soon as you see it. Hmm? It's just above. <laughs> The question was, where does Python come from? So you're almost on the thing. So this is not an overlay. <laughs> and the problem with this one is that there is this Python uh, argument. And this Python argument is you don't, it, it has to come. And if you want to make an overlay, it has to come from self or super. In this case, you're using uh, the override derivation. So it should probably come from super. And this Python is like, if you want to make something which depends on a specific name or a specific attribute within the overlay, then you should probably use it as a name of the attribute and make it that way instead of using Python as a package. OK, another example. Yeah, where is he, by the way? <laughs> so if you are watching remotely, Garibas, I hope that you will fix your code. <laughs> so this code has um, multiple issues. One of the issues is like, why do we import needs packages twice? <laughs> you first import it add the argument, and then use the path which is inside it to import it again, which is terrible for people who are uh, com uh, want to do, for example, cross compilations, because then you got a different system. And if you were to import a package set, which was configured for a different system, then you import it again, and you lost all this, all this system customization with this one. 
The other thing is that you have this overlay which is deploying within this file, and within this file, you have like inherit packages, which is the one which is that argument, and that's completely wrong. You are basically, you have three versions of packages. <laughs> that's just, and if you're cross compiling, that's even worse. You might even get the wrong one. So, what you want here is basically first split it into two files. And then you want to remove the package and probably use self or super. So that's how it should look like. You have one file which is, okay, get the path of next packages and only import next packages once. <laughs> if you want to do that. Then you have this overlay, which is probably a default .next or whatever. And this overlay doesn't depend on packages, it depends on self or super and gives that to the requirements.next. And that's all. Split the files, it will be nicer and smaller in terms of code. So, I have a, again an example. And I, same thing, raise your hand if you see the issues. So here's the issue is basically you have packages that you depend on and you want the derivation out of them. So call package is a function that you get from super, okay? But the things that you give as argument which are dependencies such as the VT uh, package or Lua 5 are derivation and you want to get them from self such as somebody else can override them. So let's look at how uh, overlays work and the, how we compose them. The logic of the composition is this uh, update operators that is in mix. So we have two sets, and we will make this example a bit more complex. These two sets, we use the update operator, and, then and that's fine, it returns the set. Then we go one step further, we add super. Super is the previous one. So we give as argument of bar the, a super argument. And the super argument will be the left hand side of the update operator, which is uh, the foo, even a super argument, which is an empty set. So in this case, we have that. There is a missing part here, but that's just for simplification. It does not give anything. Then we generalize the extend, uh, we generalize the update operator and give that the name extend, which is not exactly the same as the one which is in the library, but probably we shall rewrite the one in the library. So the way it works is exactly the same thing. It's like you have the left hand side and you have the right hand side and you call the right hand side with the left hand side as argument and then you have the update operator. And with that you can use them and compose them already with starting, okay, I have foo, uh, which takes the empty set, and the result of that I give it to bar, and, and so on and so on. So we can make uh, that for a list, and we can pull that and say, okay, use this expand function, you have the empty set, and so on, and you iterate over the list, and that's basically how these packages work. And you can go even further because you want to have a fixed point and your fixed point is basically saying okay now I have this self argument to all of them so you have all your overlays in the list and you have the fixed point which is basically giving the self argument to all of them so this is what the fix function is doing and the map function is doing here the map function is here to forward the self, argu uh, the self argument provided by fix to all of them. So here we can almost take the previous example and uh, make that into, hey, I have this overlay which takes self and super and compose all other overlay which are in the same directory such as foo.overlay.needs and bar.overlay.needs. And that's really great and we have a similar example in uh, next packages Mozilla. So let's see if you can spot the issue here. Know that you know how it works. What is 
It, it's supposed to it's supposed to add packages and be a friendly overlay. <laughs> so I see a few ends, and the issue here is that you have lib and you have latest, and these two are attributes. And the way the update operator works is basically it will erase the previous one with the new value. So basically, what you're doing here is erasing all the library functions by this Firefox version <laughs> one. And that's not friendly. <laughs> that's you're erasing all the work for all others. So you want to make sure that what, with whatever you do, you at least extend what was already in this attribute before. So I. It's not yet settled, but we are trying to uh, go into making a convention, which is like, if you, have, if you are making an overlay which has reproducible packages, then that's fine. You go to the top level. If you have utility functions such as, oh, I want to parse some things, then you go into lib. If you have packages which are updated automatically without doing, in, doing anything in terms of changing the sources, then please don't go at the reproducible packages because that will be a hell for anybody who wants to make a reproducible environment. So go into latest and add your stuff into that. And if you want to make a shell environment which is not dedicated for building anything, then probably go into dev env or uh, some similar names. So these are conventions. It's not enforced yet, but <laughs> that's just play nicely and uh, think of everybody having the same conventions. Uh, on the same side, uh, it might be nice if we had a similar naming for googling or searching this uh, this set of packages. So currently at Mo uh, Mozilla, we have needs packages Mozilla, which is Firefox, Rust, and some other tools. And if you are making an overlay for some specific package, then you can probably name it after the name of the program and say dash overlay.next. This way, somebody can say, oh, I want to pick only this one and sim link it to uh, the .config list packages overlay directory. And if you are making a repository which is uh, containing only overlays, then provide a default .next which aggregates all of them if you have multiple ones. So what can we do with overlays? Overlays I are quite powerful in terms of, uh, yeah, we can compose and that's nice. And we can do something such as fetch from the network because we have a new built-in for uh, fetch URL. And as soon as you fetch something, you have another problem, which is parsing it. And then you have to generate derivations. So I will go for uh, a few examples, sorry if it's a tiny one. So fetching from the network is a simple, you have the fetch URL, it will take a URL and put that into some file somewhere, and then you can go and parse, okay, I have a JSON file. So in case of Firefox, we have a JSON file which gives us the version number of uh, the various branches, such as the nightly is uh, 58, the uh, beta is 57, and the stable is 56. This version gives us basically uh, we can derive from this version the location of some checksum file. And this checksum file has a specific um, layout, which is the hash, then some other information, and the name of the binary. So you can use uh, the built-in match function to basically use the regets and filter the parts that you are interested in and get, for example, I know what is the finance that I'm looking for, give me the hash, and then I can, I can generate the derivation for that. So the way the Firefox.overlay works is basically looking at this file, extracting the hash and, uh, and the binary name, and then generating a derivation which is like, okay, now your sources are fetch from a fetch uh, URL with a SHA and a name, and that's all. So uh, I got a remark from the slides that uh, you cannot parse context-free languages from regex bits. Yes. <laughs> but they are clever guys. <laughs> so if you look at the rest of the lay, it's 
a bit more complex. So there is first the fetch uh, part, which is basically reverse engineering Rust up which is a common tool in the Rust community, which is like, okay, I want to update the Rust C compiler to this version for the next, uh, for everything which comes next. So this basically is a reverse engineer of Rust stuff, which is, okay, how do you get the address of the 2ML file, which is uh, depending on the channel at which you are, or the date, and uh, the location of uh, where the files are distributed. And that's basically how the fetching of the metadata is made. And it goes through HTTPS, such as at least we know and trust the static wrestling.org. And that's how we fetch. Now, uh, let's look at what we get. So we get some nice language which is harder to parse with registers. <laughs> And this language is a 2ML, it's basically a Hini file which has the same syntax as we have in Nix for uh, having the dot notation for attributes which are under multiple layers. And then it gives us like, okay, you have this package which has uh, this hash and a bunch of stuff. And it even has list if you have two braces on both sides. So, okay, that's a nice format to look at. And we can make a parser for that. <laughs> so uh, for making a parser, it might be nice to split the phases into two and first make a tokenizer. <laughs> so how do you t go and parse this 2ML file? You basically make one big regex, which basically expresses the list of tokens that you expect. And you also express the layout, and that's give you not yet a tokenizer, but the basis for it. <laughs> then you have a tokenizer function, which is using a new feature of Nix 1.12. Uh, you can look at the old version, which is uh, in nixpackages.mozilla for Nix 1.11. Uh, it's a bit more hacky <laughs> and not as stable as this one, but it's more challenging to understand as well. So this one is working by using the split function. The split function is basically taking a string, huge string, and looking at the token and split your string with, okay, I have something which is not a token, I have something which is a token, I have something which is not, and alternating between the two. Then as we go and alternate between token and uh, non-tokens, then we have to filter out all the things that we are not interested in, and uh, if there is something which is not layout as part of the non-token part, then we want to throw saying something, okay, I don't understand your 2ML file. And that's basically what the filter layout function is doing. So, no, we, to we tokenized as we isolated the things which are tokens and the things which are not token, it said that we still have text, but that's good enough for us. So, no, let's make a parser. So, a parser is kind of simple. You basically got some text, and you're in a state. So, instead of making your parser where, where you go and do a recursive descent uh, through your, the information that you got, we have to mutate the state, mutate. Um, the reason why we cannot do a recursive descent into a parser is because Nix has some recursion limits, which are not directly tied, uh, made into Nix, but made into the binary, which is, which is interpreting Nix. And we cannot use a recursive descent because of that, and because it will be way too huge as soon as you go deeper into uh, this level. So the trick here is basically, if you think of it as an LR parser where you have state and each time you move from one node to another, you change your state. And then you have to remember what is the state. So we want to have one operation which is applied every time in a sequence and which does not consume stack. There is a built-in which is called L and with the apostrophe. This is a built-in which is kind of special compared to the full L implementation in the library. Uh, it's that it defaults to it now. Uh, this basically avoids consuming stack. 
it will call every time a function, but will not increase the stack space for every element in the list. So we have an initial part, uh, an initial state. This state is like, okay, we are in state zero, and we uh, have some context. When we iterate through the tokens, we basically, okay, we're in state zero, then do the match, for example, the name, and store the name into the state. When we are in, and we increase the state uh, counter, so we are probably in state one, and in state one, we expect the token to be always equal. So that's what we are in this code, and so we say, okay, no, we uh, eat the token equal, so let's go to state two, and in state two, we match, for example, a value, which is a string or a boolean or whatever, and we have this token to value function, which will give us the value as the next value interpreted from the true ML file, and we will set it to the name. So that's really simple, honestly. And it's just going through state and saying, when I hit this token and I'm in this state, then I go to this other state. So we made a parser, and now we got to uh, deal with the fact that the system is not represented the same way as the system that we have in the manifest file. And so we implement a switch, which is like, if you give me the system in Nix, I can give you the system for the tarballs that you are looking for. And the switch in Nix is just an attribute set, and at the end you say, oh, I want this attribute. <laughs> and if it does not exist, then you complain about it. So we went through the overlay, we saw that we can make it compose files, insert it into the fixed points, that's really nice. It's not yet declarative. And we can fix that. But that will be the subject for another talk, probably, because there is an RFC which is in the pipe, which is simple of right strategies, which give us the ability to have, the ability to have a, simple, a single syntax for uh, all the override functions. Like override derivation, override, and uh, whatever you can think of, it basically should be expressed with a single syntax with this model. So that's basically the end of my talk, and if you have any questions, please raise and I will try to answer them. Thank you. Um, I have a question about uh, the when to use the self and the super argument in your overlay. Uh, basically, you're saying when you want to use a library function, you should use super, right? Yes. Um, what if you, uh, ex uh, you have an overlay, you want to extend uh, lib with your own library functions, and in the same overlay, you want to use uh, these library functions inside your packages? Is that, shouldn't you do that? Should you then have two overlays? Or should you, because so you can't use self in, in your... You're, when you have a library function, you're supposed to use super. When you're defining the function, that you have already access to it. So you could make it two. I won't recommend it, because you can just use the ones that you have. So right. just <laughs> use the ones that you have, it won't matter that much. Oh yeah, if you have them in a lab binding, then you call them directly. Right. But exposing them is nicer because that means that older can work on top of the work that you did. One quick follow-up question. Uh, so uh, in NixOS, you also have this lib uh, argument that, that your module gets. Um, I found that when you override uh, the lib from, pack from Nix packages, uh, those overrides are not accessible in the lib argument of the NixOS module. So I always use packages.lib in my modules, but I've read somewhere that, that is, that's not the right thing to do, uh, you shouldn't call, but how do you, uh, basically how do I make it so that uh, my own functions are accessible from lib, from a NixOS module? So, packages.lib should not be used, indeed. Yes. <laughs> uh, the problem that you have is that the lib that is given as argument is basically used for the evaluation of modules. So, unless you're modifying the, mo the module system yourself, uh, then you should be fine to use packages.lib. 
And the separation of the two was basically made for that, to uh, split the module system apart from all others. And okay. the problem is that people uh, tend to use uh, packages that lead to get make options and uh, make default and others. Yeah. And this is where we had to say, no, you shall not use packages that lead. So if you have custom functions like the Firefox versions that I saw uh, before, uh, yes. That's safe. That's safe. It, it's totally okay. safe. That's as long as you uh, make sure that you don't use uh, module system functions from another library than the ones that you have for evaluating the model okay, system. Perfectly, okay. Yeah, we don't do that right, so that's that's fine. Great. Right. Cool. Um following up on that, I do self dot call package <laughs> all the time and it works great. <laughs> So I will be happy to break your code soon. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> so when you use self, it's, in, it's one iteration slower because you have to go through the fixed point. It's not a big deal in terms of performance. It's a big deal in terms of uh, concepts because uh, my goal is aiming for graphing and for uh, the simple of right strategies. And the problems that you got by using, not using this uh, super for the call package is basically that you're adding a, an external op uh, going through, uh, through the fixed point. So call package, if you use self for call package, you will say, okay, I'm here. I'm going through the fixed point to find call package. And then call package itself is using the fixed point to go to the dependencies that you have. Or the dependencies that you have. And you are going twice through the fixed point. And this is a problem for implementing graphing later. Because uh, the way graphing works is by peeling off the fixed point and making sure we can have another version of mixed packages to make the deltas and do, make sure that we can do the graphing. I just wanted to make a quick warning. Um, the uh, the regex syntax in Nix one twelve has changed, um, and so uh, so be very careful. Um, and also in Nix one eleven, there wasn't a, there were two regex syntaxes, depending on which platform. You're on. Yes, I had this problem too. <laughs> Actually, I think fetcherl also requires a SHA two fifty six now. Uh, the built in doesn't. Mike throwing is a dangerous part. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do you think that? Um, well, one, I've sometimes had had issues with overriding packages because, uh, so using override actors, because they, um, rather than having some sort of fixed point, they just use rec. Um, and I'd like to be able to override stuff like the version, uh, which is then referred to by the by the expression itself, is do you think an overlays like system would be helpful that, for that as well, or reasonable, or possible? <laughs> you mean within each of the package? Yes. So the simple override strategy should provide the answer to that because okay. it's basically giving you a declarative way of writing uh, packages, and you no longer have a function which is like SEM to make mm -hmm. derivation. So you get just an attribute set and no rec, and you basically can get all the information out of it. It, it might be a bit complex in terms of concepts, but the syntax is still to be discussed, and should, we should aim for making it simple to read. And it should solve uh, the problem of having the version, because the version will just be one field in, in the set that you can override without going through uh, override derivation. Thank you. <laughs> um, one first simple question is why is it called then self and super? You could call them packages and functions, for example. That would be much more simple. So there is one thing which is called legacy. <laughs> and yes, we shall probably rename them at one point. But anyway, you can 
It's in my file, so I can name them like that. Yes. And uh, does it make sense? It totally makes sense. Okay. And if it's so easy to fuck things up and use the wrong one, um, isn't it possible to enforce that? I mean, that we are using the wrong one, the the right one. Why so are packages available in both? If you should not use packages from super, then just disable the packages in super. You cannot disable the packages because they are the result of the make derivation function. But can you? But you can disable the functions uh, from going through the fixed point by putting no on them. That will be one solution to avoid uh, having using functions from cell. Yeah, that would really help to have just a narrow going up saying, okay, not possible, do not use this one, it is use the other one. So it is possible for functions, mm -hmm. it's harder for packages, unless we are going to the stage where on, you can only get derivations if you go through the fixed point, which is like we will have to have a post-process uh, at the end of the overlays and others uh, stages, which will basically convert that, uh, convert every uh, recipe into its derivation from the part. Is that something that we could implement in like two days in a hackathon, for example? <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> <laughs> maybe it will break some code. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last question. Uh, so um, you go through a fixed point of self, and uh, what what is it you do with super? Will it just descend until the, the empty attribute set is reached and check for all attributes inside, like like the inner most loop? Yes. And uh, do you have do you have uh, like like uh, have you re read into um, uh, um, Recursion schemes, maybe because because this reminds me of recursion schemes of, uh, and and my um, maybe maybe there's a, like a term already for that because you have different kinds of. So we of, don't have uh, a recursion problem when going through super because super will just go back and tell you find basically the attribute which yeah. is the empty uh, when you uh, find the empty set which is at the root. Right. Or it does not go back, but you make the attributes okay. which are big, becoming larger and you <laughs> poke into the, into the last one. Uh, you have recursion issues when you go through self, because self is basically, uh, you can define yourself. Yeah, you're, you're going through your own definition. Yes. Round and round. 